Hi, the Art of Science here. Um, I get questions uh, often about different things that I use in the studio, so I just want to do a little clip here showing you uh, different things, items, and things that I use in the studio. So I hope it's helpful. Thanks. Hi. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is my palette. This is actually a polyethylene plastic that I get from a company called Tap Plastics here in San Rafael, San Rafael California. Uh, I like it because uh, I like the size. I can get it any size that I want to fit any table because I use a lot of paint. And the other thing that I like about it a lot is that I can take a palette knife and actually with my palette knife scrape off the dried paint very easily for cleanup um, when I'm finished painting. Uh, this is much easier than using glass or some of the other uh, items that people use. So it's uh, polyethylene plastic. Hi, uh, the next thing I want to show you are my gloves. Uh, I like to use uh, these gloves here which are gardening gloves that I get. They have a rubber um, side for the palm and the other side on the top of the hand is actually a woven mesh so these gloves actually breathe but still protect me from paints and mediums that I use uh, during my painting process. Uh, I want to show you my bucket that I use. I actually use a four gallon bucket because I use a lot of water um, uh, to clean my brushes during the painting process. Uh, you can see my brushes inside and I fill it up about a quarter of the way, um, a third of the way uh, with water. Um, it allows me to actually clean my brushes, slap it around on the side of the bucket uh, just for cleaning. I use acrylic paint in jars because I, I use a lot of paint. What happens a lot of times is the jar gets stuck because the paint gets dry and it's almost literally impossible to open. A rubber mallet is very useful during these times. I use that, you hit it against the side of the jar and that breaks up the dried paint so that you can actually open up the jar and get it open again. Hi, I want to show you the spray bottles that I use. I have two spray bottles. Uh, one is a very large one that allows me to get a real uh, heavy uh, mist or spray of paint. Also a very fine uh, direct uh, spray. I also have a small mister which I can use and sends out a small mist of water. Uh, between the two of these I can control how much water I'm putting into the paint whether I want to get a large spray for uh, drips and um, uh, making the, uh, the paint very fluid or a fine mist if I want to do some blending or just have a little bit of water in the paint just to manipulate it. Hi, uh, the next thing I want to show you, um, this is one of my large canvases and it's on a very good sturdy easel, but even with sturdy easels you have some problems uh, that I'd like to show you uh, a couple of tips to get around. The next thing I want to show you is what I call the bed of nails. When you're doing your painting and you want to paint the edges and you have to get the bottom side of the painting, uh, what is very useful is to take a uh, one by two like this and actually either hammer nails in or screw nails into the wood and then the painting can actually rest on the nails without uh, interfering with the wet paint. Uh, you can also at this point if you wanted to instead of flipping it over you could actually just take your brush under here and paint around the the points of the nail to get the bottom of the painting. What I do is I paint the top part of the painting turn it upside down so the wet paint is sitting on top of the little points of the nail and then I paint the top of the painting, the top edge of the painting. Uh, the next thing I want to show you uh, is using how to use bungee cords to keep your easel on your, your canvas on the easel. Uh, what I do is I take bungee cord, wrap it around the crossbar and around the easel so this way while I'm painting um, it will not wiggle and come off because the bungee cord is actually holding it on. Uh, this is very useful when you're doing a very large painting that actually uh, 
because the easel isn't wide enough to brace both sides, if I'm painting on one side of the canvas, it actually will flip the other side, but by using the bungee cords, it actually secures it onto the canvas so that won't happen. Now, one of the things that I do is because uh, for some reason, manufacturers, they make easels so that your painting actually sits in this groove, which makes it very hard to get to the bottom of your painting. What I do is I sit my painting on the edge here like this. In order to get my painting to sit like that, I take these two by fours and place them behind the canvas like this so the canvas sits on the edge and leans against here. I'll show you. Now with the two by fours behind the canvas, I can actually paint the edges here. It won't move because it's actually leaning against the 2x4s behind it, but the 2x4s pushes it out just a little bit to get past this edge, allowing me to paint the bottom edge of the canvas without the interference of the lip being over the front. Okay, this is the next part I want to show you. Um, this is the top uh, of the easel, the clamp that comes down to hold onto the canvas. I have to show you something that you can use to actually uh, keep the canvas from falling back, again allowing you to paint this edge. Let me show you. Hi, now imagine this is the painting sitting on the easel, and this is the portion that slides on the center post to hold the painting down. Normally, uh, this front lip would go over the front of the painting, blocking you from painting that little area, but what I've done is I've attached a paint stick to the back of the lip so that the painting, when, it's, when it comes down on the painting, the painting actually sits against the paint stick and doesn't move, allowing me to actually paint the top edge of the painting without the interference of the lip. So I hope these tips were helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please email me at heinzart at AOL.com and please visit my website, www.theartistheinz.com. Thanks.